Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and today we're going to make another Tinkercad circuit. So let's get cracking. Friends, we are starting on my website because this is where I house all of my circuit lessons. If you click on this button, there are tons that you can play with. If you go down just a little bit, they are organized in an order that may help you as you learn circuits. Today, friends, we're going to use an integrated circuit called the 555 timer, and we're going to make a light blink. So now it's time to launch Tinkercad. Of course, the first step is to switch to circuits, and we're going to click create new circuit. We are going to build with a breadboard and we're going to build with three resistors. So I'm going to bring one resistor out. If you accidentally start to make a wire, you can just hit escape. I'm going to click on that resistor and I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to put it right out here in the 26 to 30 range. I'm going to click it again and do control C and control V. And I'm going to move the next one to the 24 to 19 range. And I'm going to click on it again and do control V. And I'm going to put this one down at the 20 to 24 range. Now I just want these separate. We're going to use these holes to connect them and this helps it stay organized. Friends, we need these resistors to be different values. So click on the resistor and it'll pop up the little menu where we can change it. We need to make one of these 16K. So notice it says 16K and press enter. You'll notice the color of the bands change and that is how you read a resistor. The other one needs to be 6.8K. And then the final one down below needs to be 220 ohms. And you'll see later how we adjust those to make the blinking change. We also need to bring out a 9 volt battery. I'm going to spin this guy around, same tool right here. I went too far, so we'll just wrap it around one more time. And I'm going to connect the positive to the positive rail. And I'm going to make that wire red. This helps us keep things organized. And I'm going to take the negative to the negative rail. And I'm going to make it black so that I can keep track of that as well. Friends, we're going to bring out an LED. And when you set this in, I'm going to set it in 7 and 8. And I want you to understand that this is the cathode and this is the anode. So this is where the negative will connect. LEDs only work one way. So you always have your negative on your cathode side and you have the positive coming to the anode side. Friends, we also need the magic chip we're going to play with. It is called a 555 timer. I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to drop it at number 12. So it'll be on both sides. This just helps us when we're talking about it. You could really put it anywhere. You just need to keep track of where the pins are going to be connected. We're also going to do a capacitor. And we want our capacitor to be a polarized capacitor. I'm going to drop it right out here at the 30 and 29 with this being the negative rail. We're going to change its settings to 10 and then I'm going to put the voltage at 9 volts because we are using a 9 volt battery. All right, friends, so we're going to use this little dude as a clock. Now, it's not really going to tell time. It's just going to send pulses. Friends, this right here with the dot is pin 1 and then it wraps around and goes 5, 6, 7, 8. Friends, let's quickly rename this as 5, 5 timer and I'm gonna put blink as well, just so I can keep track of what I'm building. Friends, from pin three, there'll be a high and a low signal, and that'll be what turns the light on and off. The resistors determine how quickly it pulses between them. And then finally, the capacitor is gonna be used later to determine how long the light stays on. So if you've got your wires like me, let's start with this and go from the black to pin one. Let's also take this resistor, let's rotate it so it's standing up, and we want to connect it to the negative leg and then it'll be in this row right here and we'll connect it to pin three because remember that's the magic one i'm going to make this green just because that way we can see where it goes so this is the energy coming back in to our led from pin number three i'm going to switch back to black and i'm going to go from the negative leg of our capacitor to pin one and then i'm going to go from the positive leg to pin two now to keep this organized, I'm going to switch that to orange. So I can always tell my negative legs are black. My other legs will be different colors. Real quickly, I'm going to click out here and I'm going to switch to a different color. Let's do yellow. And I'm going to go from pin four and then watch this. I want to click above the holes and I'm going to bend it and connect to pin eight. So I'm just going around like that. Now, once you do that, you can move this anywhere you want. I'm going to just keep it up here because I think that looks pretty good and it keeps it organized. Once again, I'm going to click out here and I'm going to switch. This time I'll do turquoise and I'm going to go from pin two 
back out here into space and I'm going to connect to pin 6. Once again these can be anywhere I'm just making it clear as we build. Friends now it's time to connect up resistor 1. Once again I'm going to click in space. I'm going to pick a different color. Let's go to the plain blue and it is going to connect from 20 to pin 8. And then we're going to go to the back leg and this time I'm going to go up and above. I'm showing you is that it connects to 8 and 7 just like that. Let's switch to another color. So once again I click the space then I pick my color. This time it's going to be purple. And friends, we're going to connect resistor 2. Once again, I'm going to go up over. This time, I'm going to go to pin 7. And I'm going to go from the last leg up and over to pin 6. So those are just one pin off each other on each of those connections. Friends, remember to click up in space. Let's switch to red. And we've got two more positive connections. We're going to go from this side of the LED to the positive rail. And we're going to go from pin 8 to the positive rail. Alrighty friends, so it is the moment of truth. If you hit start, it should blink. If it doesn't, you've got one of your wires incorrect. So just back up, work through them one at a time, make sure you have your colors. Now this warning means it's got too much power and it might blow up. Here's a cool thing about circuits, you can change them. If we take that 220 and make it 400, boom, the warning is gone. Now the pulse is pretty fast. Remember that is controlled by these resistors. So if you click on the resistor, it'll let you change it. So instead of 16K, let's make this 40K. Notice now the pulse is much slower. Friends, we wanna make one more magic adjustment. Now to do this, you have to stop the simulation. These will not change on the fly, but watch this. If we change the capacitor, which is a storage unit for electricity, now when we start it, it will have a much slower blink because it is storing the electricity in between them. If you change this on the fly, nothing changes. We'd have to hit stop. And now if we hit play, it goes back to the quick blink. So we have learned now that we can use a timer to make things blink and change the resistance and the capacitors to make the blink function how we want. How cool is that? Friends, I hope you had fun and learn a little bit about the 555 timer and how to organize projects so you can do some learning and get cool results. Friends, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, if you got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.